the mind is always working. If we're just doing one or two jobs at a time, that would be no big problem. But it's usually juggling several all at once, and no wonder it's tired. This relationship, that relationship, this job, that issue, lots of things are going on in the mind all at once. And many times when we start meditating, it seems like just one more thing, one more ball to throw into the air, one more thing you've got to juggle. And it's no wonder that when people leave the monastery and start trying to juggle the meditation along with everything else, that some of the balls get dropped. And usually it's the meditation ball that gets dropped. It's better to think of the meditation more as a way of cutting jet down on the jobs of the mind. The practice as a whole is a way of cutting down on the jobs. And the meditation gives you a place to stand, to do your work. So instead of making the breath a job, you make it the place where the mind stands. It's good to get practice in this. This is why you have to have time away from your daily life. So you get used to taking the breath as your foundation, lowering your center of gravity so that you stay with the breath. In Pali, they talk about the object of the meditation, Aramana, literally means a support. It's a support for the mind. It's what the mind sits on, where the mind stands. And so it takes a certain amount of work to get that foundation solid. Once it's solid, then you find you can stand on it. It gives you support while you're staying with the breath. As your support, then you take on the other issues in life. And part of the purpose of the meditation is to put you in a position where you can start seeing which issues are the ones that are really worth taking on and which ones are not. Part of this is simply being with the breath. You get more and more sensitive to the movements of the mind, more and more sensitive to what you're doing, where there's wasted energy. At the same time, it gives you a place where you stand apart a little bit from the activities of the world. And you see them in a new light. Again, this is one of the reasons why you have to come out and take some time away from those activities, to get used to looking at things in, that, in the light from the point of view of an outsider, someone who's not totally involved, someone who's not totally taken in. This is why the Buddha recommended that his monks go off into the wilderness, places where they can get away from people. So you can have a chance to evaluate what really is worthwhile in life. If you're going to lie in your deathbed and look back on your life, what things are you going to wish you had done? What things are you going to wish you hadn't done? Learn to look at your life as a whole, and not just what whatever little bits and pieces are thrown up at you. in day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day activities, because otherwise your life gets fruited away, fruited away in meaningless things, unimportant things, and the important issues just get pushed to the side. But when you step out for a while, you begin to get a sense of your life as a whole. What do you want to do with it? What's worthwhile? What's a worthwhile use of your time? Many times you hear of people who are told by the doctor that they have, say, you know, three months left to live, two months left to live, and suddenly they start dropping a lot of unimportant activities to focus on the things that really are important in life. It's good that they're doing it. The shame is that they had to wait until the last three months of their lives. One of the purposes of meditation is to let you step back from your life while you still have time, as far as you know. So it's not just three months that are lived wisely with a sense of their importance, that you can live your whole life with a sense of its importance and have a sense of direction. And even if you decide that you want to have a life involved in lay life, still you're doing it from a, a different perspective. 
you've got that foundation of the time you spent separately. And then you carry with you that foundation that you develop with the breath as your support. So you find that you don't have to juggle so much, and you have a more solid place to stand when you do have to juggle the affairs of daily life. And you can see which, which balls are worth dropping, which are not really worth trying to keep in the air. So you can focus on the things that really are important. So even though the meditation is work, and that's what the word gamatana means, it's our work. As meditators, the object that we're focusing on, don't think of it as simply one more burden to add to the mind. It's a new place for the mind to stand, and also a place where the mind, once it's standing there, can get a better sense of its priorities. That way, when you leave the monastery and go back out into everyday activities, you've got a foundation that you can take with you. So get to know the breath. Learn to be on good terms with the breath. If you're not on good terms with the breath, if you seem to be fighting it all the time, it's not going to become a good foundation. This means giving it some time to show itself for what it is. You can nudge it a little bit here. If it seems too long, you can make it a little bit shorter. Or if it seems too short, make it a little bit longer. It needs to be deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter, whatever. You can nudge it in those directions, but then give it some time to show its results once it's been nudged. If you want it to be your friend, you have to be friends with it. You have to give it a chance to speak for itself. You have to listen. So listen carefully to what the breath energy in the body is telling you right now. What kind of energy feels good for the body? Sometimes when you're tired, you want good long in-breaths to energize the body. When you're feeling tense, you might want a long out-breath to let the tension dissolve away. You may find that certain parts of the body that haven't been, been involved in the breathing process really would like to get involved, or it would feel good for them to get involved. They, of course, themselves don't have any opinions on the matter. But if you learn to read the sensations in your body, you can tell which parts of the body are lacking breath energy. So think of the breath going to them for the next breath, and then the next, until that, that part of the body feels full. And then search for any other parts of the body that would seem to could use some good breath energy. Let them get involved in the breathing. So even though it is work, it's work in providing a foundation. And while you're here, it's just the only thing you have to worry about. You have no other responsibilities. Just be in touch with the breath, the way the breath feels. How far does it, the sensation of the breath go down into the body? Well, examine it. Is there any line in the body where you say, this part is breath and this part is not breath? Or do you have a sense that the whole body could be involved in the breathing process? It's one of the things you can explore to get to know the breath. Listen to the breath. The more carefully you listen to it, the more you find out about it. And the more you find out about it, the more it can be your friend. To help you with all the various jobs that the mind has to undertake. So while you're here, you don't have to listen to the Dharma talk. Just listen to your breath. What kind of breath feels good right now? Use your imagination. Say, well, how about breathing like that? How about breathing like this? And then see what happens. This way you get to know the breath in ways that you might not have otherwise. If you don't experiment, there's, there's no knowledge. You don't know why things happen, but if you know that you changed the breath in this way, you got those results. You changed the breath in that way, you got these results. That's knowledge. It comes from participating, it comes from acting, it comes from doing. Yet at the same time, you have to have part of the mind that just watches. 
that's evaluates, observes. So it's a combination of these two things. Your improvisation, you're using your ingenuity and adjusting the breath to make it feel better, and then your powers of observation to see what works and see what doesn't work. When I was staying with the John Fung, these were the two words that he te seemed to use more than any other when he was giving meditation instructions. You improvise and experiment. The word he used was, use your ingenuity. And the other one was, be observant. See what works, see what doesn't work. This way you develop a friendship with the breath. When you're friends with the breath, you feel at home with the breath. It's a good place to stay. And when you get used to staying here, then it really can become your foundation, so that when you leave the monastery and go back out to your daily life, you've got a solid place to stand. You're not constantly buffeted around by what other people have to say, what other people are doing. You've got your inner foundation. As long as you're on good terms with the breath, that's the best relationship you can, you can have. Because other relationships come and go, even our family they come and go. As long as you're alive, the mind has to be on good terms with the body, the body should be on good terms with the mind. When they're working together, they get their work done. They aren't fighting at cross purposes. In this way they validate each other. You don't have to go looking for outside validation. You've got your inner validation. This is what feels right. This is what feels good, because you're really observant. You learn to trust your powers of observation more and more as you develop them. To try to be what's sensitive to what's going on here in the body, going on in here in the breath. It may require work, it may be a job that you're not used to, but as you get more and more used to it, it becomes more and more second nature. And then you find that it really is a helper, it really is an assistant in whatever other work you've got to do. In other words, when you're driving the car, you're standing in the breath driving the car. Talking to other people, you're staying in the breath talking to other people. All your activities get brought into the breath in this way. The breath becomes the foundation that underlies them all. This way your life isn't chopped up in a little bit. It's time for this, time for that. It all becomes time to be with the breath, and then to work from the breath to do whatever else you have to do in the course of your daily life.